Hello, my name is Ralph Chu. I'm a professor emeritus of optometry and vision science at the University of Waterloo School of Optometry and Vision Science. My original degree was in astronomy, and after graduating from the University of Toronto, I got a degree in optometry, did some further work, and then spent the rest of my working time as an academic doing research in occupational and environmental eye safety and solar eclipse eye safety is one of the sideline interests that merged my two principal educational backgrounds. On April the 8th, 2024, we have a total eclipse of the sun for parts of Eastern Canada. Now, what this means is that uh, during the course of the afternoon, we're going to see the moon move in front of the sun and start blocking it. If you're in the path of totality, what will happen is that over the course of the afternoon, the, uh, the moon is gradually covering up more and more of the sun until at the point of totality, we see a very, very bright flash of light, which is the last bit of light coming through the mountains on the edge of the moon. And when those go out, we then see the corona of the sun uh, surrounding the dark moon. And then at the end of totality, there's another bright flash, a so-called diamond ring effect, as the light starts to come from the surface of the sun through the mountains on the side of the moon. And then we get the crescent forming again of the uh, partly eclipsed sun. All of this happens over the course of about three hours of time. Totality is just a very, very brief period right in the middle of that. If you're in the path of the shadow, that the moon casts, but not within the path of totality, what we call the partial or uh, penumbral zone, what will happen is that you will see the moon gradually cover the sun partly up to a point and then start to recede. The path of totality will actually enter Canadian territory just around St. Thomas or thereabouts in Ontario and then proceed uh, to the northeast through the Niagara region and then across Lake Ontario towards Cornwall over Montreal and then through Quebec and the Maritime provinces and then uh, towards sunset the path will leave the earth somewhere to the northeast of Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, I'm often asked if there's anything special about the sun during an eclipse that makes it dangerous to look. And the quick answer is no. Uh, the difference really is that on a normal every uh, day jaunt outside, we learn over our lifetimes that we just don't look at the sun if we can avoid it. It's just too bright. But during an eclipse, something is different and we want to look at it. And so we deliberately look at the sun and we're overcoming that natural reflex to avoid looking at a very bright object. There's a lot of mythology about how dangerous it is to, to look at a uh, solar eclipse. Some of it is grounded in fact, but the uh, fact is that uh, when it comes to looking at a solar eclipse, if you've got the right gear to protect your eyes, then it's perfectly safe to look. One of the problems that we often see when the news media talk about when it's safe to look at a solar eclipse is that they don't differentiate between the partial phases of the eclipse and totality. It's never safe to look at the sun without protection when there's only part of the sun covered. But during totality, when the moon completely blocks the light from the disk of the sun, that is a period of time when the really, really bright surface of the sun is completely blocked off, and therefore you can look at the totally eclipsed sun without any kind of protective uh, filtering in front of your eyes. In fact, the thing is that if you try to look at the uh, totally eclipsed sun through any kind of uh, protective device, you will see absolutely nothing. There's a number of different devices that you can use to observe the sun directly as well as indirectly. And they're all quite safe as long as you pay attention to how you use them. For most people, a direct view of the sun uh, through what we call solar eclipse glasses or solar viewers 
is the easiest and most convenient way to do this. These devices are designed to reduce the uh, light from the partly eclipsed sun down to a safe level. And essentially, you can look through these for an unlimited period of time without incurring any after images or any sensation of excessive brightness to the solar image. And these devices are made to be in compliance with the international standard, the ISO 12312-2015 2 standard that specifies things such as the darkness of the filter and the way that it's put together in the holder so that it doesn't fall apart things like that. So look for a device that indicates compliance with that standard and you should be fine. There are also indirect ways of looking at the sun through what we could really call a pinhole camera kind of device where you have a very, very small hole in a, um, uh, in a card or uh, at the end of a box and you point that towards the sun and then look towards the back end of the device where there's a small image of the sun uh, cast by that pinhole. That will work for partial uh, phases of an eclipse and give you a very, very, uh, very small image of the crescent sun and you can watch that quite safely. But the thing is, never look through the pinhole. So we've got a lot of different choices for viewers to look at the sun during the eclipse. The most common type of device is what we call solar eclipse glasses. And these are very nice uh, devices that are usually made out of cardboard and have a special filter mounted into it. And uh, they're made in the shape of glasses, sort of, in the sense that they have arms that hook around your ears and the filters are held in front of your eyes, similar to a pair of spectacles. And the solar eclipse glasses come with a variety of uh, different filters that are designed to protect your eyes. There is a type of aluminized polyester filter that is used, as well as something that's called dark polymer, which is really just a sheet of plastic, which is made extremely dark. Both of these work equally well. The main difference is that the aluminized polyester gives you a sort of whitish blue color to the solar image, whereas the dark polymer gives you a dark orange color to the sun. In addition to solar eclipse glasses, there's also what we call the solar viewer. Uh, this is basically a cardboard mounting that is in the shape of a rectangle, usually with a single filter in the middle of it. There are some models of this kind of viewer that have uh, a filter that is shiny on one side and dark on the other. It's basically an aluminum coated dark polymer lens. One warning though, if you do have one of these uh, filters, the aluminized surface is intended to be pointed towards the sun as the first layer of protection. If you have it in front of your eyes, it'll do equally good a job, except that you'll also see the reflection of your eyes off of that aluminized surface, and that can be a bit of a distraction. All three types are perfectly safe to use uh, and work very, very well. So when do you use uh, a viewer or solar eclipse glasses to look at the sun? Well, you can use them anytime that the sun is in the sky and it's visible, but during an eclipse, when do you want to use them? During the partial phases. In that case, what you want to do is to stand facing towards the sun but looking downward. Put the viewer in front of your eyes or put the glasses on onto your face and then look up towards the sun. And that way you'll be able to take a look at the sun without the dazzle that you would get from uh, an unfiltered view of the sun. When you're done, look down, take the viewer or the eclipse glasses away and then just go about your business. Remember though, that if you can't make it into the path of totality, you're never going to have an opportunity to look at the eclipsed sun where the moon completely covers up the sun. And so you will need to use the filter continuously throughout the period of eclipse. As with any device, you need to be careful to make sure that 
a pair of solar eclipse glasses or a solar viewer is safe to use. And that means you want to make sure that you inspect it to make sure that the, uh, the mounting is uh, undamaged, that the filter is secure within its mounting, and that the filter itself isn't damaged. I'm often asked, what's the best way to enjoy a solar eclipse? And, and you know, it depends on how experienced you are at it. For many of you, it's going to be the first, maybe the only time you get to see a solar eclipse. And if that's the case, uh, my advice would be, bring along your eclipse viewer and watch. Take in everything around you, because there's an awful lot going on in the world around you that you can see in addition to what's going on in the sky. During the partial phases, for example, as the moon covers the sun, the brightness of the world goes down and you won't notice very much going on except that maybe if you're really careful, you'll see that flowers start closing up. Uh, you may find that insects and birds start to behave as if it's sunset. Things get quieter because the birds stop singing. So there's a lot of other things going on in the world around you as the eclipse proceeds. Of course, if you're lucky enough to be in the path of totality, you're going to want to look up and uh, see the glory of that eclipse uh, in full. And uh, at that ending diamond ring effect, as the sunlight starts to return, then you'll have to put the viewers on again to, uh, to see the eclipse. But notice also that the world is waking up again. And it brightens up very, very quickly compared to the way it dimmed down before. So one of the things that I advise is, wherever you are, if you're watching the eclipse, have a chair nearby. Because you might want to sit down for that last little bit and then enjoy it.